So the show got started um, by Defy Media about whew, five and a half years ago now. Uh, Tony Swatton was the original host. He did quite a few um, episodes out in LA. That's where it was based. Um, they started off with a goal of hitting about a six to eight minute episode. Uh, it was pretty, it's more like a music video than, than what it kind of has evolved to for us. Um, I guest starred, I don't know, guest artist, I don't know, whatever. I was a guest with Tony on his fourth season of filming and I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of work, long hours, but uh, it, it looked like something that maybe I'd have interest to, but I didn't think I'd really ever do it again, to be honest. And uh, some time flash forward, um, Tony decided he didn't want to do it anymore for whatever reasons, and Defy Media then began, will you quit it? Are you serious right now? No. Um, Defy Media needed to find someone who could pick up the slack, because there's not too many people who make things quickly. There's a lot of knife makers, there's a lot of very, any knife makers are out here, blacksmiths, anything? Armor works, armor smith, whatever. Um, most people take their time and, and you know, they don't have big drive to get things done super duper fast. Um, you know, you guys are probably familiar with the cosplay thing. Everybody finishes their cosplay an hour before they put it on the first time, right? Yeah, well, hold up. That's like a C student mentality to do the homework like 15 minutes before class. Yeah, it's but there's not. a lot of A students that do the same thing. Well, that's the secretly C students. <laughs> so anyway, Defy Media was looking for uh, a new place to host the show, and they contacted me, or at least they attempted to contact me over and over and over, emailed calls, all that. My girlfriend at the time, Natasha, who's now my wife, encouraged me to actually pick up the phone once. So I did. I picked up the phone, and it was our producer, Brent Lydic. And he kind of pitched the idea of doing this show at another guy's studio in Michigan, but that all of those people kind of pointed towards me. They're like, you know, the only way to film in the short amount of time that you guys do is to have somebody that can really grind and forward, you know, do things very fast. So the idea was for five or six people from around the country to meet at this one studio in Michigan and film it there. And I thought that was a cool idea. I was going to work with some craftsmen that. I've always wanted to. Top-notch people. People you probably know if you're into it, into the whole sword scene. Rick Barrett, one of them, he's, he's been known for a long time. Woo! They're cheering for us. Uh, but anyway, found out that that shop didn't even have three-phase electricity, which means we'd be using little rinky-dink grinders and tools, and they, didn't ha they weren't equipped, and it just really quickly snowballed to the point where I was just like, I'm not, we can't really do it this way. But before I said that, I kind of mentioned, hey, why don't we just do it at Baltimore Knife and Sword? We have everything here. Our craftsmen, we make 50 to 70 pieces every week anyway. Send them out to Renaissance Festivals. We're already that mentality of people. Um, I keep mentioning the time frame, but I didn't really tell you guys yet. So we film in eight days. We make six items in six episodes in eight days. Now, there is a weekend built in between there. Usually the film crew doesn't come in on that weekend. So we're there, you know hurry up offense kind of thing, trying to catch up so that on Monday, when the film group does come back, we can just hit some shots as quick as possible. Uh, those are not eight hour, nine hour days. Those are 15 hour days more than likely. And it's all of us working. Um, sometimes it's even more complex than that because right now we, f we forge almost every item. So Ilya will be forging the blades. So it's not like we can move forward off camera on a lot of things because they haven't even started. Uh, so it is, it is crazy. Why we do it that way, I still don't really know. Hopefully moving forward, we'll get some more time. Um, anyway, so we picked up the show, started filming it. The first season was all hybrid weapons. Um, anybody familiar with any of those first season weapons? Yeah, we got a lot of hate from that. And it was, it was kind of tough, but honestly, I work every day with this guy who trolls the hell out of me every day anyway. <laughs> So the trolling kind of wasn't all that bad, and we just kind of pushed just back. If you just watch the way you look and stop gaining weight, the trolling will decrease. Nice. <laughs> it's a matter of public decency. You go out in public, you have to pr be presentable, and really, like this. Nice. See? Not, See? not serious. You guys can't, you can't hit me harder than he does. 
I get a good ball punch almost every day. I have aesthetic standards, you know. So anyway, the first season we had a lot of that kind of kickback, and we just went to the comic section. We just went in there and we're like, you know what? We're gonna answer everybody, and we're gonna talk to them, and we just pushed our way through. And on the second season, we decided to go back to the original format and actually making stuff directly from video games and, and anime and stuff like that. And uh, I think that kind of got most people back on our side, and we added from there, we just kind of launched off. And it's been, it's been a hell of a ride. Um, I don't know how many people are here are familiar with what happened over in Defy Media at the end of last year, yeah? Okay. Uh, so basically, Defy Media, who owns All Me, who produces Man at Arms, went a uh, lot. I don't really want to get into details of everything because I don't know everything, but they mismanaged the money pretty bad, and uh, Defy Media is no longer. So right now, we're in this kind of weird situation where we don't know where our show is going to land, who's going to own the channel, stuff like that. I do want to state, I firmly believe Man at Arms will carry on, um, but right now we just don't really know. So it's kind of, kind of a bummer to put four years into a project to have it be in this weird kind of who the hell knows what's going to happen time period. But uh, just but, to, there's a but. But we have launched our own channel. I don't know if you guys are familiar or if you guys have hit it up. It's still pretty small, but it's called That Works. So YouTube.com slash That Works, where I'm filming almost everything. I'm editing everything myself. We haven't really done fully complete builds yet. We do have one in, in the works. But um, we kind of, we do some vlog stuff. So we show what we're working on anyway. Ilya and I and, and some other guys are gonna go to Blade Show this year. So we're gonna, we're making like high-end nice stuff that we don't really usually have a chance to do. Not rushing ourselves whatsoever, doing it right. You know. I am. Completely different mentality for Man in Arms. So, you are such a piece of crap. <laughs> So please check out that that works. Uh, we do that. We also have a show on there called Your Edge, um, where we break down a very specific technique, um, such as our very first episode. Ilya did a forging of a penny scroll. A penny scroll is that little scroll in the end. You see it on traditional blacksmithing things all the time, gate work. Uh, well, we use it for sword guards. So we show you a full breakdown, multiple angles, how to do that. Um, and it's been really great having uh, the response that we've gotten. People that have just started the craft have said, hey, watch your video, went out, cut a bunch of steel up, and tried making my, my penny scroll, showed us you know, their progress. The first one's probably a little sloppy, second one's better and better and better. And that's our goal on the channel, is to really show you guys how to do specific things that all of a sudden it doesn't look like it's way over your head. You can tackle it, because we show, instead of man-at-arms, sometimes can be a little theatrical. You don't really see exactly what's going on. It's just us working. Here, our goal is to show you and explain in great detail. Instead of just skipping over things to show you the beauty shot, we're gonna focus between 10 and 20 minute videos, sometimes a little less, maybe a little more, of a very specific thing. Um, Ilya, you got anything to add there, buddy? So. As already been stated, the, the new channel is small for now, and we are focusing on providing immediate, valuable advice to the viewer who is a beginner craftsman. It is not limited to smithing, we're just at the moment starting out with that. The reason why we're focusing on that and not doing builds is uh, first of all, we just need random content to grow the channel and the content that provides value to the viewer. Uh, we don't want to scare potential buyers for the Man at Arms IP because blah, blah, blah reasons. However, since this channel is completely ours, we eventually will move forward to having epic builds there. And as epic builds require an epic audience, it would be nice if all of you would subscribe <laughs> and have each one of you find 10 friends and tell 10 of your friends to subscribe and tell them to find 10 of their friends. It would be nice, you know, the, the function does the, the, the thing. It, I love it. Uh, so, now, uh, I started Baltimore Knife and Sword when I was in graduate school studying uh, ethics, peace, and global affairs within the philosophy department. It was together with the School of International Service. Now, I needed a job where I managed my own time 
and smithing sounded a little bit easier than flipping burgers, so I started that. Uh, I have a degree in art history, philosophy, Asian studies certificate, as well as uh, aesthetics and ethics. So I am fairly familiar with the topics I choose to discuss. Um, people who are familiar with the Men in Arms uh, brand know that I try as much as I can uh, insert historical background or as well as technical background into builds when the opportunity arises. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> it's attached to the thing. Okay, good. You can't, you can't yank it. And this is, this is normal That's every day at work. <laughs> ah. What was I talking about? Education is important. See, example. Really important. Um, can't even tell the. Never mind. Um, all right. So I have this background. I need, started out making armor because Kerry Stagmer, uh, Matt's brother, offered me to use his shop, and eventually I started performing more and more duties for the shop. And now I am in charge of the hot work and smithing department. Uh, because Sam Salvati, who used to be the head blacksmith in Baltimore Knife and Sword, found a job with health insurance. Uh, that's very nice. Um, so, now I'm in charge of most of the hot work, uh, which is incredibly dangerous and stressful when you think about it. Um, now, uh, I also uh, have a background in classical art painting, drawing, and icon painting. Uh, so that helps me with chasing and repose, the jewelry work and engraving, because that background, if you actually, in fact, if you're into doing that sort of stuff, uh, like um, engraving, uh, sculpting, if you don't have a formal classical background, you will always be behind someone who does. 100% miles behind. So please sign up, find those classes and take them. It will help you a lot. Um, now, um, so the Men Arms project, um, the way I approach um, the given task is that primarily anime builds, uh, video game builds are kinetic sculptures because you see, uh, they're kinetic because they move in space, at least your brain interprets them that way, and they're sculptures because they're there to impress you. So the primary purpose is to attract the audience. And consequently, it's very often that we have to compromise on weight, size. For example, if you have forging a giant, giant sword, when you heat up steel, it becomes very soft. If it's a long piece, it is known as droopy. <laughs> so you have a piece that's this long, the power hammer dies only this wide, so the piece droops out and becomes nearly impossible to forge out straight, simply because the sword is too heavy and droopy. So we try to find compromises with size. And, and some of the stuff is physically impossible. Um, it's not just with size either. I mean, sometimes details, like I said, we only have a certain amount of time. So sometimes something might have a great amount of detail and we have to kind of use your eyes and zoom out a little bit from that detail and get a little bit more of a rough detail into something than in the, the complete package that we would love. Be honest real quick with me, anybody who's seen Man in Arms, has there been a build that slightly disappointed you in maybe even like a small way? Except the Captain America shield. <laughs> Just go ahead, yell it out. What, what was it? The size of Soul Calibur. Ah! Soul Calibur. Uh, he's, he's the bastard. Found him. Okay. Mother. Okay, so the size of Soul Calibur. Calm down. Calm down. Hold on. Calm down. Let me do this. It's going to be okay. Let me do this. Hold on, let me go ahead and just uh, film this. Real. He's been right. waiting for this. All right. You realize that that build was sponsored by Soul Calibur 3, where the Soul Calibur game designers gave us the sizes. Yeah. They gave us the sizes that were even bigger than what we did. We made them six and a half inches smaller than they should be by their graphs. So that's another thing that happens sometimes is we get kind of screwed. Um. <laughs> How about that? Eat your hat. Which, it, which was really odd. Shame. Because we saw, yeah, Soul Calibur, um, you know, 
They straight up wanted it even bigger, but the forging sometimes just come out smaller, so we sided everything down. It would have been bigger by their standards. Um, yeah, we had th like beautiful 3D renderings from them, basically from the game, um, which I still have. It's pretty fun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they were almost like they wanted them the same size. And it was like, hmm, okay. So that's another thing that we come against. Okay, so most of the time when we're making decisions, we at least get it mostly right. At least I like to think we do. Um, but sometimes it's not like we're talking to the people who really know the game. So Defy Media produced it, right? And then they have a company that goes out and looks for branding deals. And then that company that goes out to look for branded deals probably works with another representative of other companies. So say we're working with Ubisoft. We often are like, you know, when you're playing the telephone game, how many times down the road before things start getting messed up? Not very many, right? Three or four. Well, sometimes we have seven, seven of those little uh, lily pads to jump on before we get to where we need to actually talk to somebody and they have no freaking clue the client they're actually representing. They don't, they've never even heard of Assassin's Creed, but they're asking us to make the Phantom Bleed, which is super complicated in a weird way. And we're like, most of the time we, we're like, okay, we'll make it work. But a lot of times we're like, nah, no, that's not right. We know that game or we know that anime. And we usually have some room to work back and forth. But when a client's paying you, the client's paying you. Okay, which other build disappointed you? <laughs> Everybody's afraid now. Anybody else? No. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. I mean, the work was awesome on Soul Calibur, right? It was just big. You bet. The, say it the louder. Si the, the Soul Calibur game. Say hell yes, Mr. Matt. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it was big. I could tell you, Soul Edge is creepy as hell. Soul Edge there, is literally there's, creepy. There is nothing, if it's just in that dark corner of the thing, you're looking at it like, ah, uh, no, I'm leaving. I feel like I did, I feel like I did something story. pretty bad when my, my four-year-old daughter came, came to set that day, and that was like the first thing she saw. And she was like, oh, daddy, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and mo literally months later, I was playing, I don't know, I was, think I was playing PUBG or something, and I looked down, and she's at my feet drawing something. I was like, what are you drawing? She's like, I'm drawing that sword with the eyeball, daddy. And like, well, like she didn't want to, but she was. I was like, oh, God. That is a true story, 100%. She surprises me. So I probably possessed my daughter with something. Um, probably true. So be brave. Anybody else have anything that they were a little disappointed with? Lost Vein? Why would oh, you be on, disappointed on, with on. that? He started talking first, but the mustache hides the sound. Uh. Honed Edge? Okay. That's cool. We didn't make that. Tony did. <laughs> Boom! And Boom! Yeah, that was a tiny build. Anything that we made? You said but, Lost Fame? Lost Fame. Tell me why. Hmm? Oh, you just were just yelling it out? Okay. I think Lost Fame was pretty good. Okay. Now, I will actually address uh, his point because his point is uh, interesting in a manner that he probably didn't think of. When you deal with anime specifically, they, uh, anime studios have a very funny way of producing. So they have several grades of animators. So the most expensive animators are doing those either transformation scenes or action scenes or critical uh, introduction of character scenes. Oh, hold on. Every other scene is outsourced to some other subsidiary studio where lesser paid animators exist. And the animation will not be consistent within the same episode because basically different studios were working on it. It's not the same artists, it's teams of artists who are usually overworked and underpaid. Consequently, Here, what you will have... Here's a great... When we made Trunk Sword from Dragon Ball Z, oh, we don't want Final Stand. Hold on. 
uh, so what happens is in the same episode, the sword will be this long or this long, this th narrow or this wide. Let's just thumb through the trunk sword, right? Look how big and wide but short that is with a very long cross guard, um, very small little habaki piece on the other side of the guard. Boom, 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 these are all cheap. Now it's, now it's a very long slender blade with a very big habaki with a much shorter guard. Um, yeah, in this piece here. Well, let's not even get into that. Here it's got a, here it has a brown handle. There it's almost green-like. Most of the time you see it with a black handle. There, that one doesn't even have a habaki. That one doesn't even have the, the little thing on the point. Right? I'm just saying, that's the kind of things that we're faced with all the time, is which one are we gonna make? <laughs> you know, we try to, on that one specifically, we kind of took a bunch of different images and we're like, all right, let's just kind of take the pommel from this, take this from that, boom, boom, boom. hopefully people will understand. Um, some people didn't. Um, yeah, there it's like a little one-handed sword. So, anyway. Yeah, so on that point, when you're dealing with anime specifically, you, you will not ever get the thing that's exactly like what you see in the anime because what you see in the anime is not exactly like what you see in the anime. <laughs> <laughs> and it's part of their production uh, institutional practice. They, it's nothing to do with us. Has nothing. It, it actually has nothing to do with their original artistic intent. It's just a product of the budget there. Any questions thus far? Go ahead, right here in the middle. Sometimes they give us specs. If we're working, like I said, they give us specs, but they were the wrong specs. Um, most of the builds you see us do are not sponsored. They're just ones that we pick. Um, we go through the comments. Us and our producers put together a list. We usually put together a list of things we want to do, things they want to do, top requested items, because this is a request-based show. You know, yeah, of course, we're all nerds in our own right. We all have something that we're passionate about, gaming, anime, whatever. You Romantic see, comedies. You see, <laughs> you see it in the build. 100%. You see us when we're more passionate about something, so you can kind of probably tell which ones we really care about more than some of the others. But we know that the goal of this show, Man at Arms. <laughs> oh! Comic! Oh! oh! No, we're not allowed to do that. Never mind. Um, is to bring, you know, the fans, things they want to see come to life. So we definitely, some people have called us out and said, oh, nobody requested that. Well, if you see something that nobody requested, that probably was a sponsor that we kind of had to do. Because it costs a lot of money to film Man in Arms. I don't know if you guys realize the crew that films it is usually about a 14-person crew. Um, yeah, it's the same people that film House of Cards, Veep, um, give me some other ones. What was that with Kevin Spacey thing? That's House of Cards. I, I don't watch that stuff, so. So anyway, it, it, uh, Wonder Woman too. though they just filmed in DC. Like a lot of the people, we were actually filming uh, a season, well, were we filming TV? Was that for TV? I think we were filming the TV show, right, when they were doing a lot of stuff in DC. So a lot of our crew, the way the, things work is they can only work like five days on and then have to take two days off but they would go back and forth they would go work Wonder Woman for two days come back work us for two days so they could just keep working because uh, honestly I don't know anybody here in the film industry at all it's it sucks he right is, uh, we it's, know him. it's either oh, oh there's Hawson he's uh, somebody that's worked on the crew with us and uh, yeah so we have some really good people that film this and they're not cheap and the editing is not cheap and uh, and now Matt and we knows usually, why. We usually eat really well, right, Austin? <laughs> we usually yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, um, much different than what we're doing on our channel, where I'm filming on this little guy here uh, by myself, editing by myself, lighting it pretty much by myself. Um, Ilya's actually started to pick up pretty well on doing some of the handheld stuff, where all of my scenes up until now have been just on the tripod, <laughs> I'm trying to figure that stuff out, but we're getting there. Um, it was a hell of an investment and a big thing to jump in to do it on ourselves, but you know, it's awesome, we love it. And it's kind of, 
Go ahead. I don't know what I was going to say. It doesn't matter. Oh, um, one point. Hold the thought. Also subscribe to each one of our Patreon. Every dollar donated goes either into lighting, material, gas, supplies, stuff that brings valuable content to you. Yeah, so we do have Patreons. Uh, Patreon.com slash Matt Stagmer is mine. Patreon.com slash Slavic Smith is his. If you go to that one works on channel, there's videos. One-stop for everything Slavic. <laughs> Every dollar helps. We're not, nah. be we're not begging, obviously. You don't, nah. don't feel compelled to do nah. that. Absolutely. All, all the time. Um, go ahead, Bill. Oh, okay. Um, who here knows Games Workshop content? Okay. Carrie and I had discussed making a chain sword for over 15 years. Um, then we finally got a chance to do it. Uh, it is a working chain sword. Anybody who has not seen the video, yes, we took a three horsepower chainsaw motor, took all the safety off it. It's dangerous as all can be. Uh, it is literally Space Marine correct size. Uh, that's why in the demo you don't see me take it off the table because it is 50 pounds and it's dangerous. We actually made teeth for it. Where is it? Um, but it was one of those things as being a person who's been to games, well, worked for Games Google. Workshop, um, always read the lore, got to see it. Uh, I've seen people make, you know, 3D prints of it recently and everything else, but to actually have one that's physically when you put the throttle on and you hear that engine roar and you watch that chain go, it's actually kind of adrenaline pumping. <laughs> now that we make that thing, that was number Long ago. 100. You Google it. Google it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, there's things that we want to make that we haven't made, of course. Um, like I really want to make the rapier from Princess Bride. That's something great. We've been kind of trying to save it for an epic moment. Um, and we were right there, it was on the list a couple times and it didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it happens. I was a big fan of uh, Westworld, so I really wanted to make the Westworld buoy, but I wanted to make it before anybody else had theories about it. And I, I asked my wife, I, I was like, that is what's gonna tie together, that's what people are gonna end up putting together who the man in black was, I guarantee you, because I saw that knife and I keyed in on it. We made it a little late, so people didn't really care about it that much, but hey. Back. We said hell no, and almost everything we've said hell no, we've gone back and made. Uh, <laughs> we said hell no to you know the dragon slayer sword from Zerk. We said hell no. We said hell no to the scissor blade for a long time. Uh, um, Optimus Prime sword. Optimus Prime. We said no. Um, for obvious reasons. Like I told you, we have eight days, you know, so a lot of times, like the Great Sword of Artorias, anybody see that one, Dark Souls? That's one of the best uh, videos I think that we've done, honestly, it shows so much. Um, and those, it just is exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, go ahead, tell, tell the story about how that had, how we made a couple of them, let's put it that way. Yeah, so the deal with the Great Sword of Artorias, uh, we made two of them. One uh, I made off camera uh, that went to Dark Souls uh, in France. And the other one uh, had to be done <clears throat> for the next version of Dark Souls that is the same sword, but the handle is longer. And just like the gent one over there, there were complaints about the size. <laughs> when we worked from the specs given to us by the game studio. Yeah, there was the chain sword. <clears throat> it was definitely cool. Basically, the dumbest thing we've done. Um, no, no, it's not. It's one of them. There's one that's... Ton of it. Um, yeah, definitely put a lot of research into it. So, say we're familiar with the item, Let's just say we don't have to research the actual item. We know what it is and we don't have to research it. We almost always try to put in a build something new technique-wise, something special. Because um, we know not everyone's gonna be a fan of it. Like some of you might not give a crap about Warhammer, but 
you know, it's still a big crazy chainsaw thing. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, we did, <laughs> yeah, it was basically just a weird soda popper. And I'm, <laughs> there, I'm laughing at him. <laughs> um, uh, things like the, we did a Kings of Avalon piece. I don't know if you saw that. It was kind of like, hey, no one's ever heard of this probably, but we went above and beyond to show you some really cool techniques in that. Ilya went a little nuts with it. Or that was the standard, the spec. The yeah. specification said that the whole blade has to be sculpted. So it was engraved. He did almost a, it was about a month, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. About it was a about a month time before we ever filmed it of pre-build just to get it to where we could do the pickup shots. But obviously, we're not superhuman. I mean, we're close to it, I'm not going to lie. But we can't always do some of these projects in the time allotted. It's just dumb. So the really high detailed stuff where people are like, how'd they do that when they didn't even get the little thing right on Lost Fame? Well, it's because we spent a lot of time ahead of time doing it, uh, which is kind of like donating our time. We don't get paid a lot. Um, who here has actually seen our television show, Art of War, with Danny Trejo? Yeah? A couple of people? That's us, in case you didn't know. Uh, that's like a whole nother beast. <laughs> um, and hopefully we get to do a third season with them. That's the same thing. It's kind of tied up in the whole Defy Media debacle. But uh, I do believe that we'll get another season on that as well. Um, we filmed that in about, what was last time? It was the like first six, one was four weeks. Four, first one was four weeks. This time I think we got six weeks to do it. And then we fly out to Ilya, me and Carrie go out to LA and we do like, you see the war room shots ahead of time and then the demos where the martial artists come and the reactions, oh, so great, that kind of stuff. We, we go out to LA and do that for about 10 days. So it, it's, it's a lot of time and there is a lot more research, okay? Because we know, I mean, Ilya, Ilya and Bill could both tell you, we know that um, on a TV show, look at me struggling hot cutting that thing. <laughs> Uh, anime, video games, stuff like that is one thing, but if you're going to a specific culture and telling the world how you're supposed to make it, you better damn well know how to make it and how they did it. And now we're not going to be able to do every technique, but it's pretty freaking important that you don't become part of the problem putting misinformation out there. That's one of the things we hate the most. And we'll be honest with you on the shows and on our new channel. If there's something we don't know, we'll give you our opinion, but we'll still encourage you to do your own research to go out and figure out if we're right or not. Like, tell them about the Ulfbert thing. So, uh, has anybody seen our version of the Ulfbert? Has anybody seen the Nova documentary, Ulfbert Sword? Okay, so in both cases, both are wrong. Uh, so the researcher named Alan Williams first proposed that Ulbert were made from crucible steel. That is highly dubious. Uh, the research was not conducted with uh, what is known as a control group. So uh, the dendritic structures of carbide that the uh, Alan Williams found under the microscope in Ulbert, he never checked if there's a if those exist in a kitchen knife, and they do. Uh, he, the argument was that there's very little slag. Well, I work with Tamahagani from Japan. Uh, that has very little slag if you know how to process it. So all the evidence pointing towards being crucible steel would just, uh, eh, at best. However, it sounded much better that, ooh, European Vikings imported uh, steel from Syria. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but the evidence just doesn't support it. And when you look at the um, corrosion pattern on the surfaces of those swords, they were uh, clearly uh, not crucible steel. So, but at the time when we made it, uh, we thought, oh yeah, that sounds great, until we went to Ashokan and Rick Furr, the guy who made the first Uber, uh, for Nova basically presented his research and said, yeah, that's, that's just hype. It, it, it's probably not crucible steel. So, and ever since, we're making this correction. Yeah. But that's one of those things. And just last year, uh, no, the year before last, yeah. About, about, yeah, about a year ago plus, uh, a guy came in and asked for a crucible steel Ulfbert. 
and I hate making those now because they're not crucible steel. I, I made one, it's fine, it's very hard, it's a very nice sword, but again, not a historical thing. Can we talk about that? That we made it twice? Yeah, can we talk about the fact how long I spent grinding that and then you cracked it in half? No, you cracked it. You cracked you, it. No. You, you put a torch to it and you cracked it. Ah, uh, yeah, fair. <laughs> this was a project a gentleman came to for a custom order. Um, wanted a completely period sword, oof bird, sheath, the whole nine yards. Scabbard. <clears throat> Excuse me, scabbard. Um, and Ellie and them and Matt hammered it out, grinded it out was ready to go and this was four days before the guy was supposed to pick it up and that oh it cracked what and right down the floor it was like oh boy so Swing. they had to put they had approximately three days to get it ready for this guy can we talk about what, what you did afterwards <laughs> how he super glued the blade back together he super glued the blade back together and put it back in the rack where anybody on the film crew could easily come by and just kind of brush it so he was just waiting for somebody to do that, and, and then it looked like he, they shattered it. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened? Well, yeah. I, you know, you can't blame a person for trying to defraud the insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Is it that bad? <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, who's doing all the googly eyes? Uh, Steve. 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 So one of our groups was running around all the machines putting googly eyes on them. He's a gaffer. Yeah. So, Anyone, oh. any other questions? Spear us some other way? A lot of questions. Hmm. Which one? Right here. You. Nope, you. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can hear. Sure. So, what's the decision panel on how you see that job? Um, what do you, uh, what aspect do you use the time of the method and the echo instead of, you know, eyes and. More often than not, the determination on the procedure that we choose to make something is whether or not it's at least loosely based on some sort of tradition or if it's like Robocop sword in the future. Uh, even then, we try to put in some traditional stuff, but like say we made Iron Man sword in the very first season, what's the point of doing all that work of forging it out of bloom or something when Tony Stark would have used whatever, he would use all his robots to make that damn thing, right? So that kind of thing goes into our process. We do a lot less AutoCAD stuff lately. The real reason that that's put in there, um, A, it's can be faster, not always, but we can't put all the workload on a single season on him forging everything. So sometimes we'll be like, all right, we have three highly intensive forging builds. So let's put one or two fabricated builds where you'll see John doing a lot of welding, uh, grinding a lot of stuff to shape. Um, Carrie might have something on the CNC mill that he does some carving, like on the Katarina daggers, uh, stuff like that. So there's a balance, and it sometimes, of course we know everybody comes to see hot work. Like, that's why you watch Man in Arms, but it can't always be the case in the current schedule. If we did get a few more days possible, now, we did kind of disprove everything I just said <laughs> once, uh, where we did Gamora's sword, um, and we did that whole thing, basically kind of CNC, Plasma cut it, blah, 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 and then... It took me less time to forge out. Carrie kept saying that we didn't have time, we didn't have time, we didn't have time, so I was like, Ilya. So we had like a little downtime for where nobody really had anything to show the camera, so Ilya went out and forged the entire sword in less time than it took to do all the CNC work. So sometimes everything I just said, you have to kind of throw out the door, it doesn't always work, and he is a bit of a freak. Anybody who's done hot work knows he well, does stuff way no, too fast. That, okay, so... Um, Yes. He's, no, we can leave it there. It, it, no, it's a very... <laughs> all right, so this is called a panel. Uh, so, all right. So you know why things like the CNC, precision grinders, all that stuff developed? That is because, especially in the new, new world, the United States, 
uh, the historically the stress economic stress has been pla placed on unskilled labor. So if you have labor that is unskilled, they do things kind of bad. So you make a machine that does the job for them, and then you pay the person less. In Europe, in the old world, mo most of the stress goes into high-skilled labor who always do things better than the machine and even faster. But the problem is you have to pay them more and you have to wait till a person becomes a skilled laborer, and that's a long time of wait. So it's a cultural difference. Sexy logo, look at that thing. That's all me. Okay, um, uh, one thing real quick uh, before we get more on man at arms, let's just talk about um, that works. So one thing that we're doing this weekend, I hope all of you consider subscribing. It's free to subscribe to a YouTube channel. Please help us, support us. Uh, if you don't, that's your decision. Appreciate you coming to the panel anyway. But we are doing a free raffle this weekend. If you just come up to us and show us on your cell phone that you've subscribed to That Works, we'll give you a raffle ticket. We're gonna draw it tomorrow. You don't have to be present. I'll, ma I'll make a video of it and we'll put it up on That Works channel of something that we have made on one of our shows. We're gonna give away a kunai that we forged, which is basically a throwing knife from Noroto. Um, it's a very cool thing. It's, they're super fun to play with. We spent way too much time throwing those in the backyard. We destroyed a board until it was no longer. Well, once you learn how to throw them right, so the thing go sticks out this far on the other end of a one inch board. Yeah. So anyway, all you have to do is come down, show us on your phone or your tablet or a screenshot, anything that says you subscribed and we'll give you a free ticket and we'll actually give you an extra ticket if you share somewhere on social media our new channel which means you can take a picture at the booth and say, hey, support these guys, check out their new channel, any kind of post, a tweet, anything like that, you'll get an extra ticket uh, for that raffle that we're drawing on Sunday. Okay, back to Man in Arms. I was just going to say with your uh, CNC question, uh, one of the guy, one, a few of the times now we've done a CNC version and a forged version. Uh, if anybody saw Thor's, sword, Thor's Swords from Ragnarok, yeah, we saw how long they lasted after the movie came out. Um, we only literally had three drawings to work from. I mean, they're actually like paintings and covers. Uh, we had to guess at a lot of stuff, but the decision came down for both of them. Ilya forged one, they CNC cut it one. Matt and I ground each one of them, and at the end, seeing how they both performed. And honestly, they were both pretty still scary. Um, but that's one of the times where we've done both forging and CNC in the same project. Uh, also, the Witcher Blades from one of the older episodes was also CNC and yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, a lot of times we, if we have doubles in a build, which we try to not do, because that sucks. It's just another build in that short time. We do try to do different techniques on those pieces. That's a good point, though. Beard. Oh, that narrows it down. <laughs> Beard and hair. Most frustrating? The gate. Is that English? The gate? Keyblade. The keyblade? The gate. Remember? The first one? Oh. I mean, yeah. Oathkeeper keyblade really sucked. Like, it turned out nice. It was huge. But I cut myself and stabbed myself because there's points everywhere. So once we kind of got it together, I got little puncture wounds like everywhere. And I hate that sword to this day. We could bring it out to these things, but I hate it so much I don't even want to touch it. I'm not kidding. I really, like, I, I'm angry at that build. You just pissed me off, actually. Um, that one sucked. Um, Drax's daggers, believe it or not, everything went wrong on that build. That's the, when people say, did you ever do something and it failed? That one is, like, the only one, and everything went wrong. The castings went wrong. I carved the wood handle uh, to make a mold of. When Lauren did the mold, she didn't put mold release on the wood, so when we went to take it out of the mold, it just splintered into, so basically we poured um, wax into that and it was just all crappy. So I had to recarve both things twice and then we didn't even end up doing lost wax casting. Carrie then took a mold of the one, so I only had to carve one more and then we just poured Britannia into it instead of a harder metal and right into it. the whole thing. The forgings didn't work, Carrie didn't make the, the press dies correctly, so like the first two blades that we for back left, what? You stretching? Oh, there's a friend that needs a friend in the back. There, he sees him. It's cool. Um, 
Yeah. So if you sometimes have to go to the bathroom, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's been a few. There's definitely been a few. Anything for you? Um, actually, I just remember the first Chronos X. Yeah. But that was an experiment that was like, well, the first one didn't work out, and the second one did. Yeah. Oh, well, the Kratos X? Yeah. Oh, I, ju I just messed up. I forgot about shear points completely. I <laughs> forgot that the, it's an actual thing. I messed up. That's not how you make an X, so you got to fix it. But there, there was a fair point where we were talking to our producer, and he was like, oh, we'll just... We'll just cut that hole out and we'll just start fresh. And we're like, no, no let's show it. It's a good thing. Now they'll know not to do that. So it's not like it's, you know, a lot of times we're going to show you our mistakes and be honest with it. Early on, we didn't know how much power we had to tell our producers what we uh, wanted to do. But now we kind of do. So it's like, well, we'll definitely address it if we mess something up. I mean, I don't ever mess up, but he does sometimes. <laughs> Back. I didn't really have anything to do with this, but to this day, I love this build. It didn't, there's nothing, actually, I mean, it's cool as is, but it was the coolest straight out of heat treat without any paint on it. That was just badass to me. I've, you know, spent way too much time playing Zelda <laughs> in my life, like every day before school, and then the, and then the freaking game would erase because Nintendo sucked, and then you just start over. It's just a never-ending loop of playing it. A lot, lot of hours, so seeing that come to life was awesome um, for me, and I didn't even really do anything on it. It was. Now, uh, that tell. experience was a little bit frustrating uh, because uh, Matt had to go to Florida or something. Key West had to. Key West, ha ha because he had tickets to the Pirate Pride Parade. I don't know. Uh, and, right? I was playing Pirate, yes. I was reenacting down in Key West. Yeah, so, uh, so, and I said, dude, just trust me, I know how to do this shit. Just, just I I'll just do it, don't worry about it. And he comes back, looks at my plan, like, those are supposed to be overlays. Like, it doesn't matter, you can make, you can make anything look like I just wanted to else. be a part of it, okay? And you try like, to cut me out I of the got, bill. I got so much grief for that. I was so frustrated making like, fuck, this stupid mad with his stupid hat overlays, stupid, stupid, bald stupid head. beard, yeah. bald head, poops on his bed sheets. The... Whoa. <laughs> I was so mad. But it uh, turned out nice. <laughs> Uh, the first katana build that we did, the Kill Bill Sword, that oh, meant a lot to me just because, like, we were pushing for historical builds for so long uh, that when we got a chance to do that, it was like we just pounced on it and it ended up that and the Wolfbert are what spawned us being able to get the TV show. Is they used those to say, hey, these guys can do legit historical stuff too, not just. Uh, crazy gigantic stuff so that was that was a big deal doing the katana and that was kind of he had those skills but he hadn't really done a lot of it yet um, working with bloom and stuff like that so that was that was a big hurdle that really launched him down a path that he's still going down um, so it was a big game changer uh, Bozette I guess <laughs> For me, it's really weird. Like I said, I want to do the Princess Bride sword. Just because I've seen that movie way too many times, too, growing up. It was like that and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang at my neighbor's house. That was like all the movies they owned, so that's all we ever watched. Uh, it sounded music, too. Um, so I really want to do that. But for some, my specialty, at least what I consider to be my specialty, what I make, what I do really fast, and I consider it to be pretty good, and I don't get a chance to make a very nice one all the time, is a like Roman Gladius. And I've never made one on any of the shows. And it's really weird that we've done this for five years and I've pushed for it for as long as we've done it and I've never got that chance. So. Technically, technically, uh, you did one for that briefly appeared in the new channel. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Technically. Yep. Yeah, so 
diving into, we'll just, we'll get back to it. You guys can give your answers in a second. So diving into Roman stuff, we found some examples of Mosaic Damascus. Anybody here know what Mosaic Damascus is? Oh, shit. Uh-huh. So <laughs> normal Damascus, we're talking about manipulating the just pattern. Google it, just Google it. Google what? A picture is worth a thousand of your words or more. Okay. How the hell do you spell it? Mosaic. No. M O Z A I K D. No, the ill the ill twerp thing. I wanted the the ill twerp swords, whatever they are. So mosaic Damascus, just like mosaic tiling, anything like that. See, that's all Damascus. So it's done instead of normal Damascus. You're forging this way, you're manipulating your layers that show through. Well, Mosaic Damascus, this is your surface. So however you stack your things, you can stack them this way, this way, reforge things over, and then your restack, it's always the end of your billet, not the top and the, and the bottom. It's the end of your billet that's showing your pattern. That's did how you, you manipulate. Did everybody understand that? Yeah. It's just like that. Exactly, correct. It's just like that. So here, somebody, you know, made a little buffalo in a can, probably. So they did that with powder around it, boom, 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 and then oh, they look at those stack cute it. Buffalo harassing each other. Um, Great. This is kind of more of like what I'm doing, doing different patterning and doing it like that. But we found some Roman swords that actually had. Let me see if I can find those. Uh, that actually had mosaic Damascus in it. And I had never really done mosaic. I've always kind of poo-pooed it, honestly, because it's, it's a little modern, in my opinion. And as soon as I saw that it wasn't modern, I was like, that's my gate. That's going to pique my interest. So I actually did probably one of the most complicated forge welding mosaic Damascus things that anybody should ever try. Um, because we took our time, and Ilya really encouraged me to do things the right way, uh, it worked. And it probably shouldn't have. But it, it was didn't. it was weeks off. Hey, you think if I uh, cut this corner and don't do it the right no, way, it will work yeah. out? Don't don't. No. I, no. <laughs> what like that. about here? No. <laughs> so, Bill, go ahead and tell him about yours. You might want to hold your ears on this one. Okay. I know you hate this one. Um, for me, something I've always wanted to do is the dark crystal swords. Oh. Oh, don't encourage him. Yes, encourage me. Um, oh. for, so as far as fantasy pieces, that's something I'd always like to do. Um, for historical-wise, I'd always also like to do a nice forged bastard sword at some point. So I like fantasy, and I do like historical. Um, but yeah, for that, that's from a kid, that's been a goal. So yes, encourage. All right, let's take a look at this real quick while I have it up there. Um, it's really hard to see. These are really ancient swords. Let me pull up one that has kind of a sketch. All right, so if you look, it's a really crappy image. Anyway, you can see it. So there's little tiles in there. There's also twisted bars. This is stuff that people did, uh, God, 2,000 years ago. Yeah. So each one of those things is made up of a little tile about this big, forge welded, drawn out whatsoever. There's little trees you can see in there. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, so that really led me down this path of like, holy moly, if they did it 2,000 years ago and I can't do it, then I should not be doing what I'm doing for a living because... Correct. That, there's... <laughs> Screw you. Screw you, man. Um, I'll give you guys one thing. Working at the shop, all of us here, we love historical pieces. We all collect originals. Uh, Ilya has pieces. Matt has pieces. I have pieces. Rick, Carrie, you know, we all have pieces. Of, pieces, pieces. It's Reese's, lots of them. Um, and we all have our different cultures that we like to collect from. Um, working in the shop with this where we have other people who come in and like who've brought actual Viking swords or 16th century German swords, um, you know, we actually get to handle these original pieces and get to see them firsthand and not as well as own them. Um, like I said, for me, I started a Suba collection a few years ago, um, but handling a Japanese sword from the 1600s is like, oh, this is really nice. 
or a German longsword from the 1500s. I mean, you're, you get a real appreciation of seeing some of these historical pieces. And it's just the amount of people we know that come around that collect these originals. You just, it's unbelievable. There you go. See that billet? See how many little pieces? Uh, it's basically, that's those center squares are 12 individual billets that have already been welded up before we even got to this point. Why don't you show it when it looked like Minecraft? <laughs> I'll show that just because you're a troll. Um, and then a little weave pattern that's made up of other billets that I forged down to those little teeny tiles. Uh, so each one of those is an individual pattern that I then forge welded. So, and that's where it stands right now. I need to get back on that project and kind of figure the rest out. I'll show you real quick how we actually did that, if you're interested. So the forge weld on this, because it won't fit under our power hammer, it was too tall. The initial thing that we did is I slammed it on the, we put a, basically an anvil on the ground, and I slammed it to initiate the forge weld. And because of how that weave is actually stacked, it looks a little crazier than it really is, because all those pieces want to come together. So as soon as I slammed it that way, we went to the other, you know, turned it on its side and did the weld. So I'll show you that real quick. We got better music now. I got a bigger library, just saying. So just gentle taps. And boom, it's pretty much welded the first time, but it, I, we did about three heats of this just because um, I was a little nervous. <laughs> but everything worked out. So boom, and I think, did I show it etched in this episode? Do you? I don't want to show you too much because y'all got to subscribe to this channel and go watch it. Um, yeah. I'm not kidding. He's, He's really channel. proud of it. So could you applause a little bit? Like, yeah, yeah. Good job. Yay. He's, he's really proud of it. Look at that. He can also make cool stuff with macaroni. Here you go. So this is what was me starting to put the pieces together. Just that. to that's, that's Minecraft right there. No. It's even worse when he holds it. He can't figure out the sound yet. Fantastic thing is, this okay, is my yeah, yeah, yeah. project for uh, Blade Show 2019. As you can see, I have my hood on. I'm going to tighten this up and wear protective guard. Yeah. So, would you look at this? Somebody come look at this. It's like, uh, what do you call it? It's like a necktie. Minecraft. It's a necktie. See? Minecraft. Minecraft? Yeah. Well, now I want to throw it away. Thanks. They don't need the dentist noises. But yeah, that's, and that's the other nice thing about doing our own channel is that we kind of get to goof off a little bit more. So you can see that we're complete idiots sometimes and have fun with it too. Um, what? Oh, Ragnar's Axe. Who watched the Ragnar's Axe episode where I proposed to her? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I got her good. Still makes her cry. She's about to cry right now. Ah! So, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> a little bit, but it was pretty damn cool. 
Uh, we had, you know, our friend Felicia come out as Sauron and, and break it with, with the mace. So that was, that was pretty cool. I actually have a video. I don't think I have it on this laptop. Shoot. Um, so she actually had a cosplay mace, like just made out of warbler and stuff, foam. So she kind of fake swing the, Sam actually got to swing the real mace and break it and they just kind of cut it up to make it. Uh, I don't think it hurt. What kind of hurt more so is something that we did on the channel on one of our vlogs uh, where I had forged my very first mosaic thing that I ever tried. It just, my pattern got, nothing was wrong with it per se. Just the pattern on one side skewed because I, I'm still kind of learning how to do some of the stuff that he does. So when I forged the bevels in, my pattern got skewed. And after the heat treat, we, you could see it, and it was like, ah. So we just, we just like last week, snapped that thing in 10 pieces and then reforged welded. That hurt a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say it hurts. Sometimes, it's nice. Honestly, I mean, you should break some of your pieces sometimes just to make sure you're doing shit right. Well, uh, Excuse my language. That's one way. Uh, there are two ways of looking at this. First of all, uh, it is, when, when you work a lot on something and then you realize it's garbage, that's how you know you learned something. Second, uh, if you are a dedicated craftsman, the first half of your life will be spent making stuff and the rest will be spent buying the stuff you made back and destroying it. Because <laughs> it's garbage. Welcome back to another just, episode of In the Works. We've got a lot of really cool take things a little, to show uh, you today. Take a quick first, break real quick and just watch the beginning the of this. We're going to present Custom Gladius to its new owner. So this is, um, we did a vlog where we kind of made a lot of this sword. This is kind of a Gladius based off of some Warhammer stuff. Bill can tell you more about it. But uh, you never really get to see the reactions of customers of stuff we make. So in this one we actually present the sword to the customer where he sees it the first time. I just think you guys might get uh, a kick out of seeing something like this. So this is about a $2,000 sword if you order it from us. It's a uh, Forge 1045 blade. 1045. Uh, forge the skulls, cast the bronze rivet skulls, and everything else is either ground into shape by hand or plasma cutters used and some fabrication. And it's about a 30 inch blade. Yeah, it's a big sword, big hefty thing. But to give you an idea of some things that we can do rather quickly, I mean, we bang this out in a couple days. Um, this was just kind of fun because Bill, Bill and Carrie kind of plotted out what they wanted to do for this and we just we just executed it. What do you think, Bill? Uh, I think it's pretty badass. So it's based off an ultramarine gladius, if anybody knows Warhammer lore. Um, Give it to him. Do it. And they kind of put their own thing together and here's, here's the customer. Oh my goodness. There you go. <laughs> Just a wee little sword. <laughs> a wee little sword indeed. Oh my. So he originally wanted something he yeah, could boy, use, but sure. also something based off that, so we blended Bill, a couple Bill, you ruined things. the line I wanted him to hear. Well, we can free play it. Rewind. Oh my goodness. There you go. <laughs> Just a wee little sword. <laughs> a wee little sword indeed. Oh my. You have a way of making people's dreams come true, that's for sure. Damn right we do. <laughs> Damn right we do. Now, after we gave him this sword, I got messages for the next three days of questions and questions. And it's a guy, I mean, I met him at the rent fair. He's a friend of a friend. Um, but it was just question after question after question. I mean, he is still to this day pumped up about this sword. And he just, he's, every time I get a message, like, I really appreciate it. You guys were awesome. I mean, he's just, he's completely grateful for what he did. And it's. It's a rarity you get to do things like this. So custom pieces can be done, just can when we have time. They can be. <laughs> In the back. You, you, ponytail. Ooh. Ooh. So the question is, what is our... What, our, our favorite swords to handle, to use, that we've made. On the show, specifically? Ooh. For me, Koromokuro is pretty yeah. nice. Koromokuro was pretty awesome. Um, 
Uh, Carol Mugger is one of my favorites. Um, scary enough, one that I wasn't a part of the build, this is before I came on, um, they did Orchrist. Oh, now, Orchrist. if you saw Orchrist and you saw that entire video and all the punishment they put that edge through, um, when we got done, Ilya handed me the sword and there were some uh, tatami mats still left and it still cut through those mats like butter. So between the coconuts, the cans, hitting the table, everything else, it was still just, it was like a razor blade. I mean, that blade, the, cutting through a mat, it's like it wasn't even there. And the kunai that we're talking about that we're doing oh, the those giveaway, are, those, those are just, a, like, we, didn't, we weren't excited to make that. We were like, oh, it's going to be a cool build because Ilya forged them really neat and he practiced on them. But the first time he threw them, he was like, oh. <laughs> you should have seen it. Oh, he's like, man, come, man, come, 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 come. I was like, what, what? He's like, come outside. And he just basically for a couple weeks uh, walked around with those kunai in his pocket. Uh, All right. I mean, I during do, breaks, we were doing it see every it, break. But I could do the whole. I probably had videos. Like, <laughs> like this, two in each hand, double, turn around like that. <laughs> but when it. Very when it came to demo day, everybody was so tired. It was like, oh, fuck. And we and made it a little different, anyway. and we filmed it in a different area. So, like, uh, yeah. And I got okay at it. I never got great, but I was pretty good. And demo day, I did not do well. It's pretty funny. But Rick Janney is obviously the best. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I do have that video, but no. I'm going to use that for really good blackmail someday. <laughs> It was just funny every day after work going out there and just like, okay, here we go. We'll do it this way. We'll try from this distance. We'll do it from this distance. And we were just, I mean, the holes in the boards were just insane. How hard so, do they hit? Oh, like, they boom. hit, like, I mean. Take a door down easy. Uh, yeah, you're, you're Take done. Take a person down really <laughs> easy. So we're going to do something real fun real quick. Like I said, I'm going to edit a video. And in that video, we're going to show the raffle drawing um, that we're going to put up next week. So I'm just going to stand up and I'm going to say, Hi, MAGFest, and I'm going to turn around and everybody just yell something. It doesn't matter. Is that cool? We game to do this? Everybody going to be in the video? Ready? Hi, MAGFest. <laughs> hey, MAGFest 2019. <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm going to use that clip over and over. Let's, let's do another one. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to have even more people here in 2020, right? Um, all right, let's get back. What were we doing? Questions. Uh, before we take some more questions, uh, just wanted to make sure you guys are all aware of the panel tomorrow as well. If you guys are into this, uh, tomorrow is less of this kind of bull crap. It's going to be a lot more uh, historical stuff. Well, Ilya, I don't even know what he's talking about yet, but well, usually, we, usually it's pretty awesome. But you're going to be recording it from, like, over there. Yeah, if we can find my other battery charger, we will be. If not, we'll plug it in. It'll be worth 11.30. Right here. What time is it? That's nice that we have an hour and a half this time. So we got, like, 20 minutes left. 20 minutes going. Usually we're already over by 10 minutes. Behind, how's that? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So the stuff you guys did, you're real dangerous. Mm-hmm. This guy, yeah, you lying sack of crap. What? You almost cut your fingers off. That's kind of significant. Well, that's because you rushed the artistic process. <laughs> Not really. We've gotten really lucky, and what we do, there's so much chance of anything going wrong. For instance, using hammers, hardened hammers on an anvil, like you could have a little piece chip off. It could happen, yeah. and we did have it happen one time. It just didn't hurt one of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> But for the most part, burns happen every day. Uh, burns don't count as injuries. Cuts for the that most, most part. people would probably go to the hospital happen every day, and super glue is our best friend. Um, Ilya, on the very last day of filming uh, for the TV show, was putting the last touches, putting together uh, the naganata that we made. And, it, and he had it wrapped up in fabric, and he just did this little move, and. Whoosh, and I walked in, I think I was in the bathroom, and I walked in, and he's holding it, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and I was like, what's up? He's like, I, I did something. <laughs> yeah. 
And you just hold it. Yeah. So that kind of stuff. I mean, it happens. It's pretty bad. That was a fun ride to we the hospital. We don't. The majority of what we do every day, not man in arms, but bomber knife and sword, is not sharps. We make blunt swords for stage combat and renaissance festivals and stuff like that. Uh, for Disney, we do Disney as Aladdin stage work, so we, we make all the swords for them. Uh, but mostly Ren Fairs is what we do, Renaissance Festival stuff. So jousters, and you see the fighters, we make the stuff that can actually hit edge to edge safely. Uh, so we don't usually cut ourselves like that. But uh, there's, wood, more often than not, I, and he can probably attest to this too, I hurt myself when making the wood handles. Because <laughs> I don't like to wear gloves when I sand wood. That's the only time I don't wear gloves. Because he is dumb as a log. <laughs> um, I just feel like I get better detail, and I just like, I don't really pay attention to him. Um, so, like, the edge of the belt gives you, like, the paper cuts from hell. You know what I mean? As the belt's going, and just, just one little touch, and you have the paper cut. Um, so I got scars and stuff, and he does too. But we've gotten pretty lucky. Carrie is the only one who almost killed himself. And that was a long time ago before the show ever happened. Um, we're not allowed to use that machine anymore. He actually retired it. We used to have a big buffer. If you remember, Tony used to call it like the wheel of death or something when he buffed stuff. So basically the same thing, but ours was another half horsepower. So I think it was five It was like three. Was like three and a half horsepower spinning. And we used our wire wheel and a buffer on that. And we make these steel mounted axes. So the whole thing is steel, the handle, everything. And he was a wire wheeling one and it got caught and it flipped around, like caught, flipped around and hit him in the chest as hard as you could imagine something hitting you in the chest. If it had been the other way, so the handle is what hit him. If it had been the ax side, he'd be dead. And I watched it hit and then after it hit him, it continued and hit the wall and stalled the three and a half horsepower buffing machine. So that's how hard it hit him. And I saw my brother just do this and basically fall to the floor and I thought, well, He's I'm, never been the same ever since. I was yeah. pretty sure that he was going to be all messed up, and he got away with just some bruised ribs. So that's about the worst thing that's ever happened. I can think of broken fingers have happened on that machine, too. Um, oh, how fun is it when a big belt snaps? Big oh. belt snap and wacky. The one got him last year, was it? Yeah, I almost got hit with a 24 grit. It <laughs> Actually, I was able enough to get mostly out of the way, and I, I felt it hit my side. I didn't think anything about it. I went and go checked. I looked up, lift up my shirt, and I'm bleeding. I'm like, oh, this is nice. I'll always call that, in my head, I, I remember it as the cookie monster effect, because when I, the first year that I started, uh, I was 15 years old, still in high school, uh, I started working with Carrie, and they left me alone one night to do a bunch of grinding. They all went to dinner, and I was grinding uh, by myself, and I had my favorite cookie monster shirt on. I'm serious. I'm not lying. My favorite t-shirt when I was younger, and... A 24 grit, very fresh. The joint just snapped because Carrie used to buy cheap belts all the time, like off eBay. So it's probably been sitting somewhere in a wet, damp storage area. So it had, the glue on the back of the belt was gone. So it, like, immediately when I turned it on, slapped me, and then ripped halfway. Instead of ripping all the way, it ripped halfway. So now we have half a belt on, half a belt off. So it continued to smack me <laughs> at 3,600 RPM. So, boom! And I was just, and just fell like, oh, uh, my shirt was just like, I looked like I was like Wolverine attacked. It was awesome. I was kind of like geeking out like, wow, this is really cool. But my shirt got destroyed. So. And that's when the sanders were actually not as powerful as they are no, today. now we have five horses. That was a two, two and a quarter. Is another question right here in the red shirt. Oh. No, uh, no. I was wondering, so what is your opinion on the base piece that uses less traditional materials, like the scissors? Mm -hmm. Well, we can, I, I mean, I don't, exactly. What do you think scissors are made out of? <laughs> Sure, and like we did blade sword out of titanium and X-23's claws out of titanium. <sighs> I freaking hate that stuff. Titanium, the problem with titanium is... is it smells bad. It smells bad. That's his problem. Uh, you can't see because it sparks so bright white. It's like staring into the sun. It can't see, so I have to wear like uh, shade five or higher glasses, and it's like... You literally have to work blindfolded. Like, it is legit working without and it being able bad. to see. 
and it wrecked. I mean, and it's it, very abrasion resistant, so you burn yeah. through tons of belts to get what done what you normally not have to change a belt at all. Um, so your bird box making, if you will. Bird box. How many people liked Bird Box? Yeah? I'm trying to get Ilya to do a spoof of that with me, but he won't I, do it. I choose not to do spoofs of some things I haven't seen. What are you saying? Yeah. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> I like, I love cooking. You know, I'm actually a good cook. I've made couples break up because of how good I cook. <laughs> yes. It's true. Yes. You had somebody over here or something? What did you want? Let's do her. Okay. Oh. Oh. Not really. Not folders so much. Not saying we wouldn't. Uh, that's a whole nother. Like, we're primarily sword makers. Yes, we make some knives, more like hunting knives, bowie knives, that kind of size stuff. Folders is a whole nother thing. And I've made one or two, and that's a whole, yeah. A whole different whole nother realm. Uh, but if you want, like, everyday carry kind of. Solid stuff, definitely. Yeah, you, go ahead. I'm just kidding. Uh, my everyday carry is... Uh, Don't oh, play. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I have a curse all that I carry sometimes, but I don't really carry a knife. I'm not that guy. Sorry. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Bill and Rick Janney, they're kind of those... They have knives and stuff on them all the time. I just never really... like. If I go out anywhere in the woods or something, yes, I'm always gonna have a knife of some sort because that's stupid not I to. I never but I, carried a I never. You do have. What? We went to Blade Show and he actually bought a pocket knife. Yeah. From a Japanese guy that made it. very simplistic, just no. No well, locking you, mechanism, nothing. It's kind God, of like a straight called? razor. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, for me, I, I, some of the previous jobs I always had to have a knife on me, either cutting up boxes or whatever it might be. Um, I have a bench made. Uh, and actually the one I carry with me all the time that's been great is this little LA police gear $20 knife and it's taken a hell of a lot of abuse and I mean I'm at the shop the majority of the time if I need a knife I can probably go and I have one so I usually don't carry them around I've actually punctured my really nice leather seats <laughs> in my car before having anyway you pick, Ilya. You seem to be very passionate uh, funny about Funny shirt. Funny shirt. That okay, narrows so it down. This is a really specific question, but if you got into forging on like mild steels, what would you recommend starting to work with tool steels that need more finesse? 1045. Well, okay. 1045, 1045 is great. Before you learn anything else, like 1045 can hold an edge. It's tough. You can make a good spring. It's forgivable. It's water quenchable, so you don't have to spend money on oils, 1045 is pretty good. It can get just as hard as any of your fancy steels. Uh, it is very forgiving. Uh, it's very hard to burn it unless you're stupid. Uh, no, like it's, sometimes the, the mess up is you have, you have to, it takes talent. It, it's a great start. You, make, you can make hammers out of it, you punches everything. Like it's the one, two steel. Once you're starting to work with carbon steels, you, it will last you two years. For two years, you don't need to make uh, anything out of anything else except 1045. You, you will be perfectly satisfied. Some of the blades we did on the show were made out of 1045, and you see some of the demos we put them through, so. Yeah, he hates oh, parodies. <laughs> so Carrie was so upset didn't want us to make this video at all. He was so was like mad. A, he was so, so mad. Oh, red in the face, man. So mad. I can't believe you guys are doing this. So stupid. I mean, he's actually working with traditional Japanese bloom, so he's doing real work, but he is being a complete idiot as well. <laughs> we went and bought him the tightest t-shirt we could find. It wasn't tight enough, so he actually had to tape the back of it tighter. <laughs> I watch my finger. Uh, Walmart want? doesn't sell shirts in my they size. They didn't. They don't. <laughs> So we did this, and then uh, this was a couple years ago, actually, that we did this, and YouTube had only got a couple thousand hits, but it actually got uh, half a million views on Facebook. So I offered it to our producer at the time. I was like, CJ, Brent, like, I'll give you this. And they were like, no, 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 we can't put that on the channel. I was like, it'll be big. 
And they were like, nah, nah, we can't, we can't put it. I was like, okay, I have permit. I was like, I have permission to put it up. And they're like, yep, so we did. I mean, the pyramid head kit. And now Carrie says, you should upload. <laughs> now Carrie says, you should upload more things like Borax Bay. He said, we should do another Borax Bay. It did really well on Facebook. You guys should think about that. We're always very serious at work. My very, my very, look. Wait. The best is coming up. He's actually smacking it with his bare hand. No lie. <laughs> I should probably put the sound on. Smacking compilation was the most fun I've ever edited. <laughs> and it truly hasn't ever been the same. So maybe some some more fun parodies, right? Right, guys? Yeah. yeah. I think so. We'll have to be tasteful with it, but... Nah. Nah? Nah. All right, how many minutes do we have? We have eight minutes. Let's do like a speed round of questions. Funny beard. Funny beard. I don't see a funny beard. Yeah. The... Okay, in the back, go. Quick. Forge and fire. Oh, oh boy. great. You just asked the longest question. I'm contractually obligated to say that I had a great time. I am indeed contractually obligated to say that I had a great time on that place. I'm also contractually obligated to say that no member of the show cast is an asshole. I'm also obligated to say contractually that there is no lawsuit waiting to happen randomly okay. with the behaviors of some people. Cut his mic off, please, sound guy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I actually signed him up for Horch and Fire. He didn't do it. I did the whole application thing for him as him all the way through until they actually did the Skype interview, and then I couldn't do it anymore. And I told him, hey, you're going to be on Forge and Fire. Can you do the Skype interview? He did not want to go. I forced him. He won. He's a champ. Proud of him. <laughs> I don't encourage too many people in doing that show. It's not going to help your skills. Back here. Yep. So, uh, someone asked a question earlier, like the Hell No kind of projects. You may, I may be about to give you another one. Have you ever considered doing Monster Hunter projects? Yes, and we were actually going to do it when everything got canceled. I played Monster Hunter for a while with my wife. We all got into the new one. Um, don't lose hope. It could still happen. It could still happen. <laughs> There's a couple things I wanted to do on there. Uh, we just didn't do it because there's not a lot of blacksmithing in those pieces. You know what I mean? We gotta like carve dinosaur teeth and shit out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Uh, but yes, well maybe. Some of them are cool. There's like some big hollow hammers and stuff. So we'll, if we get back on it, we'll try to do it. Red hat. Welding process? Forge welding. <laughs> uh, Mick, I'm MIG welding just because that's what we do all the time. Um, TIG welding is awesome in its own right, but you know, different welders for different jobs, so everything has its place. Awesome. What's my spirit animal? What's my spirit animal? <laughs> His is a Shiba Inu, 100 gazillion percent. You know how many Shiba Inu accounts huh? I follow in Instagram? Like three, 300. I said, mine's a bear, go figure. I have no idea what my spirit animal is. This is a snake. Me. Stag, yeah. Whatever likes to sleep but doesn't. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you. Oh, um, all the pieces you do for the show that aren't specifically for someone or, or sponsored, what do you do with them? Do you just have like a mythical warehouse? Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> we bring, I mean, we keep, we keep them to bring them to stuff like this so you can see them. Are you allowed? Most of the things we're not allowed to sell, we have copper, copyright issues and stuff. Most of the stuff that we're doing on our new channel, however, we will be able to sell. Like, we can do our interpretation of something, can't really copy something. 
So we don't really a sell Random them. Fantasy Sword now, number five that's suspiciously similar to something from Zelda. Very, I mean, <laughs> Wait up, I more often than not, the gaming companies and stuff often reach out to us and say, hey, we're going to do, you know, at E3 convention, we'd love to have the blah, blah, blah at our booth, and we work stuff out and get them to where they should be. Over here. Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, Gotham. Gotham was one. Ninja Turtles, too. Um, also, this is a really one of those fun SpongeBob. movie nights. Uh, Dudes and Dragons, we found out. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. SquarePants, the movie, we did that. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a few. Uh, we don't, oddly, don't do a lot of that. We're kind of mass production stuff. For, you know, it seems like it should be ours. My dream is to kind of have the show be, we make something for an actual movie, hold on to it for a year, and release it in the DVD special features and all that kind of stuff, but that's like a whole other realm right here front. Is there a material that you explicitly refuse to work with? No, I mean, yeah, no. Whoa. I mean, the, people say, I mean, can you do the oh, poop? Can, I don't make you, swords you from to make poop. a poop sword. I, I make them every day, but I mean, people ask us to like, you know, do all kinds of stuff, you know, different materials, forge, all this, that, and the other. If we know no. it's stupid, we won't do it. But not really. We said no so many times, and we ended up doing it anyway. So yeah, no, no, not At, really. I mean, there's radioactive stuff that's obvious. I, I don't want to touch okay, it. Okay, shut up. But we did use radioactive stuff. How radioactive? The lead. It's not radioactive. Mm. No, it, it's only radioactive when it's hot. It's not hot. <laughs> well, what did we do? We heated it up. Right? No, no, that's <laughs> so hot does not mean temperature hot. Hot means when you oh, like run hot, it. Through, that's hot, like that. Uh, when you run it through, when it's behind an X-ray machine or reactor, Go ahead, just it talk over skips. Him. <laughs> he listens. Sure. Uh, we've wanted to do some projectile weaponry. They just production companies always scared of it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we, if you saw, if you we were able the, to see the Elray channel, they actually did a big ballista. Like, when we did uh, some of the stuff from Ruby, like the revolver, what is that? What was the, whatever. We, we always want to make things actually shoot and fire, but a lot of times they don't want us to. Uh, understandably, but he is a firearms like spe uh, specialist and he used to certify people for the certifying for their whatevers. So we have, and we have a gun range real close, so we should be able to do that. Right here real quick. Uh, is there like a suit of armor or some sort of non-weapon project that you want to do? Uh, hell yeah, I mean, we loved it. Every time he does armor, it's great. It's just armor is time and it has to fit someone specific. So the demo is hard, all that kind of stuff. But we've done some armor. We almost did a really awesome project uh, with Funimation that would have happened, but probably still will, so I can't really say it about it. So we're probably about it, guys. Um, one thing I do want to tell you is we have our booth down at the, uh, whatever, dealer's room. You can come in and ask all the questions we didn't get to. Um, at the end of his historical panel, we'll do the same thing. Subscribe to the new channel. Subscribe, come down, show Subscribe. me the thing. I'll give you a ticket. If you don't care about the raffle, do it anyway. We need your support. And, uh, as always, thank you guys.